everybody welcome back to my channel it has been three years since my last video which is a long time um, I'm Paige in case you didn't know and this is your first video you've seen of mine um, but essentially I'm revamping this channel into a space a productive outlet for all things academia all things lifestyle mindset motivation all this kind of stuff um, and essentially help you through school whatever level you're in um, I'll be going into new uni next year so that will be another journey that I will document as well. Um, but I'm very excited. My plan is to post two videos a week. And I thought I would start off by kind of a little reflection of the HSC, which has just finished and is the last year of Australian schooling that is compulsory. So I thought I would go ahead and discuss that. So essentially I have 10 things which I think I've learned um, throughout the HSC which could potentially if you are starting a final year of schooling next year. I know in Australia year 12s will be starting like this term so this is essentially some things which I think I've learned which could potentially help you in the future. Okay so the first thing is that stress is ultimately a good thing. So obviously I'm excluding like prolonged periods of unhealthy stress because that is not good for anyone and if that's something you are experiencing definitely um, seek help for it. I'm talking about little short bursts of healthy productive stress. So I think there's kind of been this movement of so many ways to tame stress and I'll be doing a few videos on uh, ways to kind of mitigate prolonged stress and kind of change your outlook on stress. Um, so that will be coming in the future. But I'm talking about um, little bursts of stress is actually a good thing because without it you wouldn't be compelled to take action you wouldn't want to do stuff i'm quite a perfectionist which i feel like i've been working on over the past year to eliminate that perfectionism um all those perfectionistic tendencies i should say um and i think when you are under a little bit of time pressure or under a little bit of stress you are more so productive than you are meticulous about every little detail and obviously being quite detail oriented for me at least is quite important um, but I think that stress is a good thing and essentially you wouldn't really do anything unless you had a little bit of stress so just kind of changing that mindset and perception about stress I think is quite important before you move into your final year. My second lesson which I think I've learned is that connecting with your why um, why you're doing something is immensely important. So obviously the HSC or any kind of stressful school year for that matter, whether it be prelims or GCSEs or A-levels if you're in the UK, um, there is always going to be points where you want to give up, where you feel incredibly, uh, you want to procrastinate, you feel incredibly overwhelmed. And I think if you can kind of keep in mind your why, why you're doing something, if you can hear like my house making lots of noise, it's because it's very windy today. Um, so apologies for that. There we go. It doesn't necessarily need to be like an end job career, which I've never said I wanted to do something for a job or for a career. Mine always has kind of been about the lifestyle I want to lead. So for example, I'm not sure if you can see, but I've got a few vision boards under there, um, which kind of just have some images of how I would want to see my life in the future. And it's not necessarily the marks that will get me that life. It will probably help me. Um, but it's more so the attitude that I develop in getting those marks, if that makes sense. Um, so whether that be putting affirmations on your, uh, on your desktop or surrounding yourself with pictures of what you think your dream day would look like, all these kind of things um, create a sense of why, a sense of purpose. And I think that's really, really important. The third lesson, which I feel like I have certainly learned uh, throughout my HSC is to always do more that is just good enough. And when you apply that mentality over the space of 12 months, that doing more can, can culminate to like, I don't know, endless hours for each subject. Um, and it's that little bit more extra that you could do that I think really gives people success. I was listening to this news article the other day and they've just started HSC uh, marking papers for like from the final exams. And I think they said that there were over 700,000 papers which teachers had to mark and essentially you want to create um, a point of difference, something different which you can provide. So I think by doing more than is good enough, you can develop that point of difference. For example, if we're talking about English, let's say, 
you have just done something in class, you decide, okay, I'm just going to watch a 15 minute video about this particular literary theory related to this text. It's not required, but it's something which I can do that is more. I then apply that into my essay in my final exam and wow, look, it was a little bit of a standout factor, something different. So I think that not just in a practical sense of physically doing more, but just adopting that mentality of what can I do to better this? What can I do to make this um, a little bit different to stand out a little bit more is something quite important, I think, throughout your HSC. Actively seek out criticism. To deliberately seek out criticism essentially only makes your work better, in my opinion. It shows that you've got this attitude to grow. It shows that you're invested in your learning. Later, that really helps when teachers are under stress and they might want to decide, you know, oh, what essay am I going to read first? They're going to want to read, I think, the student who is most invested. Let's say we're going to talk about religion. I had a religion assessment, which was due towards the end of uh, my HSC year, and I sent it to three different teachers two of which who weren't mine, seeking feedback and criticism on that assessment. And I think if you can really kind of accept and actually want criticism, uh, it's incredibly valuable and it's really going to help you grow and kind of evolve as a learner. The next uh, lesson is the power of association. So there's a quote which I love, which is, your network is your net worth. I have uh, if anyone ever like asks me, you know, for like advice on Instagram or anything like that related to study, that's one of one of the things I always say is your network is your net worth. If you have a goal that you want to get immensely good grades, which I under I totally understand, that's not everybody's mentality. That's not what everybody's goal is, and that's totally fine. But if that is something that you want to get, equally, if there is another goal you want to get, try and surround yourself with people who have a similar drive. And I think that really propels people to take action. Um, I know two of my best friends are incredibly, uh, incredibly passionate, have great work ethics, they're very driven, and that has rubbed off on me in the sense that I also think I've rubbed off on them. So I think that's very important to be able to kind of have that support network. You know, if you are struggling and you do find yourself in a pitfall, um, in terms of school, you don't want to have to turn to your support network and then be like, it doesn't matter, don't worry about any of it. Hopefully, at least for me, I want that support network to be like, it's okay, just take a break, but I believe in you, you'll get back into it, let's go. That's kind of the mentality I would want from my network of people. And I feel like I'm very grateful to have curated um, that association in my own life. Be quite deliberate about your influence that you have around you. The next important lesson which I feel like I've learned is to keep things in perspective. I feel like in the HSE you get into this little bubble where it's the same teachers all the time, it's the same people all the time and it gets very constrictive, restrictive, constrictive, either or, um, it gets very uh, restrictive in the sense that you just are living inside this bubble and you don't really see anything outside of that bubble. And I think that that's quite dangerous uh, throughout your HSC year. For example, if you get an assessment back and you're like, I really hate this assessment, this is so, like, I can't believe I got that mark, or I'm really not happy with this, this is not what I expected, you can kind of get in this bubble where you're like, okay, this is all that matters. I think what's so important is to take yourself outside of that bubble and be like, okay, is this really going to affect me in five years time? When it comes to assessments, I'd be, I'd be very careful using this uh, rule, which is called the five by five rule, which is if it doesn't matter in five years, don't worry about it for longer than five minutes. I think that's a good mentality to a degree. Um, I think when it comes to assessments and what they mean, you kind of have to adopt this mentality that the attitude which I'm building in doing this assessment is going to matter in five years. The actual assessment itself is not, if that makes sense. So I think that keeping things in perspective is a really, it's a very important thing which you have to do throughout your HSC. And do remember, it is not the be all and end all, but again, don't extend that mentality too far to the point where it do, your HSC doesn't matter. Unless, of course, it's, it's totally independent to everyone. If it's really not something that's for you, totally get that. But essentially, I want this channel to be a place for people who are invested in uh, bettering them, them, their academic and their personal selves. So, yeah. Only listen to those who have the results that you want. So, in 
This kind of relates back to this power of association idea which I mentioned earlier. I have been part of a like personal development program for the past two years called Empower You which I'll actually leave a link to in the description box. It is incredibly enriching for yourself and I would highly highly recommend it. Um, but one thing which the presenter said to me in, well not to me, but to who we were when we were at the program during the first, um, during the first program I went to was only listen to those or take on the opinions of those who have the results that you want. And I thought this was a really kind of revolutionary idea which could really be applied to school. Obviously you want to take advice from people, but if those people don't have the results you want, they don't have the attitude that you want, be very careful about how they affect your own dialogue, if that makes sense. That's, I suppose, what I'm trying to say. That one was a little bit hard to, to explain. I went to a presentation night at the end of year 11, um, and it was at a particular university, and there was a guest speaker, and she was a student, and she said, focus on the kind of person you want to be, not the kind of job that you want to have. And I thought this was a really kind of interesting idea, which I've definitely taken through the HSC and if you do get stressed about what uni you want to go to, what subjects you should be picking, should you drop any subjects, what course preferences are you going to do and you're not entirely sure about your direction, I think a really great place to start is the kind of person you want to be, not necessarily what you want to do. For example, I could rattle off a list of over a hundred traits right now that I have discovered I really want to see myself have in the future or the kind of lifestyle that I want, what my perfect day would look like. Those kinds of things I am well aware of by now because I've done a lot of uh, kind of inward searching to find those answers. Still, I'm not in a particular career where I'm like, I know this is the career I want to do, but I have very much narrowed it down because of matching those traits and those lifestyles with the particular uh, careers that are out there. Your mind needs to breathe. You need to have balance in your life. As much as you can be an academic, um, and a very academically driven kind of person or you can be really focused on study you need to give your mind a chance to breathe um, this doesn't necessarily have to be in like a spiritual way or anything um, although I am a huge advocate of meditation which I will talk about potentially in a future video and how I've really harnessed that I think um, to kind of give me a sense of academic achievement um, but your mind needs to breathe in the sense that you need to have an outlet. Like I mentioned before, don't give up your social life. Um, find something which, when you do it, you don't think about, oh, this assignment is due then, or I need to get this done, or my to-do list has this. And by scheduling that break time, you A, eliminate the guilt, and B, become totally encapsulated in that moment to actually give your mind a break. And that was a huge game changer for me um, going into my HSC was actually scheduling, okay, I'm going to take an hour out to paint, for example, or I'm going to take two hours out to watch a film. By actually scheduling it and making it real, it becomes as equally valuable as all of the other stuff that you are doing during your HSC. And my last lesson, uh, which I think I've learnt throughout the HSC, that it's hard doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. And you know, going into the HSC, I think everybody is like, it's the worst year of your life, it's, you know, it's so stressful, it, it makes you want to cry, you feel like you want to give up so many times, it's so hard, don't worry, the HSC, like, doesn't matter, even though it's really difficult. These are all kind of these things which I heard going into the HSC. Um, again, be careful about what kind of mentality you create based on what you let influence you, um, but I certainly think that by adopting this mentality that it being hard is actually going to bring me a lot of growth and the struggle is going to create this enormous reward for me at the end by kind of creating that mentality and recognizing that difficulty wasn't necessarily a bad thing um, my perception changed a lot and for the better and if I had to look back on it now I wouldn't say the HSC was my favorite year of my life um, because of how much uh, workload there was, but I would certainly not say it was the worst, and I think that that is all about your mindset going into it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this first kind of video that I've done since I've been back. Um, the plan now is I will be uploading twice a week um, about similar topics, but I thought just to kind of introduce and dip our toe in the water, um, 
I would just come back with this little reflection, which is also quite valuable, I think, for me to look at in the future as well. So thank you for watching. Do subscribe. Um, and I will see you in a couple of days for the next video.